Welcome to Milk and Honey. My name is Maddie. I would like to share five dreams. Now the last one that I've had kind of pulled in all of the other dreams together and it allowed me to see all the dreams together in one scenario. All of the dreams that I've had depict sickness, hunger, hard times that are about to hit the land. So the first dream that I had was back when we were asked to stay in our homes and wear a covering over our faces. And to be completely honest, I was not scared of that sickness that was going around in 2019. But what I saw in my dream was completely worse than anything that I saw during those times. In my dream, I was walking the neighborhood and there were people laying in the ground, diseased, and I saw a mother trying to pull her son like to her home because if they were outside, they were more exposed to the sickness, but her son had already passed. This dream was very short, but the message behind it was super strong and it felt so real and like I said, I was never scared of this other illness that was going around. This next thing is going to be completely different. This one is going to hit way harder. Fast forward to 2024 and now I'm having continuous dreams about plagues and sickness hitting the land. Another dream was I saw people very sick, like their entire body just looked sickly. They looked tired. They looked pale and they started throwing up. But when they were throwing up, the throw up was like lime green, like, like a neon yellow, like a neon green color. And I don't know if that color was to emphasize on the sickness, like the severity of the sickness, but that's what I saw in that dream. And because people were throwing up and being so sickly, the people in charge were moving people, putting people in confined buildings. And they were like divided. There was like, like fences and people were not being allowed in or out, you know, like, like the other sickness. But these ones were like big facilities like buildings where they were putting people in people were not allowed to leave because they were sick but in this confinement they were locked in almost like a jail but it was weird but i saw i saw all kinds of people i saw kids i saw women i saw men like it did not matter your gender it did not matter your age if you got sick you were sent to these places Fast forward a month, I had another dream. In this dream, I saw a man, and this man was also throwing up the same color, like a neon green color. And when he urinated, the urine was that color too. Like I said, I don't know why this color, but I think it's to emphasize on the sickness because when I saw that he was urinating, I knew that once you had this sickness, like there was nothing you can do to get rid of it. Like once it was in your body, it lived in your body. But people were being put in facilities. Now this facility that I saw, it looked like a warehouse, like tall, tall ceilings, like metal ceilings. And they had like little hospital beds. And this man was walking through, but almost like in defiance, like he was defiant the people they were that was in charge all i could grasp from that dream is the severity of the sickness that is going to hit and the people in charge are going to try to quarantine us and separate us from the masses okay so those are three dreams of sickness that i've had this last two of them were almost consecutively and the only reason that i think this is going to come soon is because the first one i had it in 20 
19 and this past ones i've had them like one after the other if you have seen some of my previous videos you know that i've shared about food scarcity coming um a lack of food famine you know just different weather anomalies droughts and that's gonna make it harder to grow food but that also pulls in all my other dreams into one full scenario in this other dream i was in what it looked to be new york i was walking out the building and there were like the cement steps going down but they were pretty high so when i got out of the building i could see towards the city and as i was walking out i saw i saw this wave you know like like a radio wave like a ripple if it makes sense from the city coming towards me it wasn't a bomb it was more like a something to do with electronics so as the wave was coming towards me i saw the lights going off in the city like boom boom as it was moving towards me all the electricity was like gone so people started panicking and they started going to their homes and looting the grocery stores but because i had already prepared i just went into my home and i locked my doors we barred the windows and we stay in there from what i saw it did went for a while this um, blackout because i saw that i actually was starting to eat my egg layers so we actually had our chickens inside our home i don't know why but that's that's how i it showed and i remember seeing one of my egg layers and saying to myself we are running low on food i think we're gonna have to eat our egg layers which i would never try to do like i hope it never gets to that point so as we were running out of food we tried to go outside through the back door but people were trying to break in from the front and because there was there was chaos as soon as we walked out we saw there was like people breaking into homes and there was completely chaos and last but not least this dream i had two days ago and it kind of pulls in all of my dreams into one scenario and i'll explain it in a bit in this dream i dreamt that i was with my pastor from chicago my female pastor pastor's wife and we were in a table and we were eating and we were just you know enjoying our company as we were eating i was telling her all the dreams and inside prophetic dreams that the lord was showing me and she was like she agreed that she had the same feelings she had been seeing the same things but she did add a couple of things she's like yes you know famine is coming you know people are gonna be hungry yes sickness is coming people are going to be sick and she's like hard times are coming and she did mention something else she mentioned that people should have extra covers extra warm clothes extra coats and the reason that i think she said that because in my in my other dreams i dreamt about drought i am florida and she is in chicago I think that's the reason why she mentioned the cold because she is in Chicago. And the way that I am pulling all these dreams together is the blackout. That would be the own that would be one of the ways that people in northern climates, really cold climates, will have the need to have extra coverings, extra blankets, because if the power goes out in midwinter. It gets really cold. I think the coldest one time we got in in Chicago was negative 50 degrees. And we had the heater on and the entire windows were like in that movie. I forgot what it's called. 
um, where everything freezes in New York and the windows were like crystallized. You could see ice, uh, ice forming. That would be the only logical reason that I could see a the need to have extra coverings would be a blackout in winter. So if you live in one of these states where it does get significantly cold, and even for us here in Florida, our homes are not meant to be hit with such extreme colds. Our pipes are not meant to be hit with extreme cold. So we just need to be aware of where all of this could lead because if our pipes burst, then that's another story. But one thing that my pastor did mention in the dream is this weather anomalies, like fluctuation of weathers, and it's just going to be all not the norm for our seasonal weather. In conclusion to all my dreams is there's sickness and plagues coming to land. So try your best to boost your immune system, get medical books of how to heal yourself, get the seeds and the plants that needed for i will say an overall you know like lungs nausea um heart you know like the basics of your body obviously we're not gonna be able to grow everything and have everything on hand i understand that so the most important part is get your immune system up but of course you know be smart and make sure that you're not doing anything reckless. So about the food scarcity at this point, the most important thing that I could say is just stock up on food, rice, beans, anything that's gonna fill your belly, just get as much things as you can um, that is going to be filling to your body and you're not gonna be hungry like an hour later. So don't buy, don't go out buying the chips and the cookies that you're gonna eat and then an hour later you're gonna be hungry again. Try to get things that are going to fill your belly like protein or beans, you know, grains. But that's just my opinion. You know yourself better and you do what's best for your family. The other thing will be be prepared for power outage and because if the weather does get crazy, that might be one of the reasons why our power might go off. Another thing could be a outer source, like a threat that hits our power grid um, and we won't be able to use um, anything, you know, that, that relies on the grid. Also, when the grid goes out, you know, pumps are used to bring water to you so if the water go if the electricity goes out maybe the water goes out with it um yes if the power goes off in my house i still have water and there's just not electricity because the main the main water plant still has electricity but if we have a widespread blackout the power goes off and the power plant doesn't have electricity, we won't have water either. So work on the water catchment. I mean, we're lucky enough to have a pool, but I also wanna work on a water catchment system, hopefully really soon, I'm praying that we get that um, handle as soon as we can. And the last part would be just get the resources that you need to deal with extreme hot and extreme cold. Try to get your family together, pray about it, and have a plan. In any case of an emergency, the best place to stay is in your home. Just make sure that your loved ones know where they can find you. And if plan A doesn't work, what is plan B? Where's the second place where they could find you? And make sure they know how to get there because we won't have GPS if the grid goes out. So make sure they know how to read a map and get to place A and place B. I know some people have said in the comments that they don't like when I speak about doom and gloom. And all I could say to that is, if a car or a train was about to hit me, I would like to know so I could brace myself and so that I could make better decisions, right? If I'm gonna cross the street and there's danger in that street, I better be careful if I go near there. The fact that I had my first dream about the sickness coming in 2019 and then 
fast forward to 2024 and I've had continuous dreaming about plagues and sickness. I, I believe that we're gonna go through these scenarios, these times very soon. And I pray that the Lord gives us time, enough time to be prepared or the Lord guides us to people that are willing to help. Because I understand not everybody's gonna be able to prepare. I understand that a lot of people are struggling right now just to live day to day. I see it all the time. Times are very rough but I believe that it's going to get even rougher. And I know people don't wanna hear this, but I'd rather, I, I'd rather give the warning than not. You know, just this weekend, my husband and I were having a conversation um, about all the dreams that I've been having. And I told him, you know, if everything goes as bad as it can go bad, People are going to try to start breaking into homes and just be chaos all over the place. And I would like to get pew pews, like pew pew. And he's like, I do, but I don't. Uh, I guess, like he really does. I think I'm more on board. Like I want to go, you know, shooting and, you know, like practic practice shooting. I've been wanting to go to practice shooting for so long. Um, anyways, <laughs> um, but my son-in-law, he is a correctional officer. So I told him, you know, Jason, you need to get a lot of pew pews. And um, so in case Kaka hits the fan, you know, you guys move in with us because that is our plan to have our children with us, you know. And I told him, you provide the pew pews and I'll help with providing shelter and the food. But yeah, um, my husband wants to, but doesn't. So I basically told him, we'll just get a hunting gun and we could use it for hunting and we could also use it for our own protection. If you have the financial means and you're like, okay, I'm set up for certain a time, I'm good with what I have, try to get more. And just because people are going to need help. And if you are financially able, just try to get more for those people. And also, you know, just try to stock up on your medical stuff, you know, like bandages, you know, ointments, anything, you know, for cuts. So just an overall checklist. Okay, so that is it for today. I always get those comments of, you shouldn't be talking about that. Why are you saying this? Which is fine. You know, if you don't want to hear it, it's okay. And the possibilities that could happen really soon. And I want to be as prepared as I can. Obviously, seek the Lord. Seek guidance. Ask Him what it is that He's going to have you to do. Because I believe everybody plays a different role. Just like there's people buying land to feed um, believers and to feed people in this time of need because God is calling his people to be prepared. And if you are listening and you're preparing, God bless you. I hope that your land gives you abundance and richness and blessings pour over you. But the Lord is calling people to be prepared and to help others because we must be the light. We are the salt of this earth and we must edify each other and support each other and support those who are in need. We are called to help the needy. So I pray that you have a compassionate heart. I pray that you have a giving heart and I pray that the Lord multiplies your blessings and whatever he is providing for you that is multiplied times seven. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one.